Howdy doody everybody, my name is Kev Gooey and welcome back to Seabed. I turned the page. I clutched the book so the wind blowing between the school building and the asphalt wall wouldn't flip the page back again. Had my own special space behind the campus, a gloomy little place that always felt a bit damp. Still, few people ever ventured there so I could always trust it to be silent. The door to the emergency exit behind me suddenly opened. The girl that came through approached me and leaned over to inspect what I had been reading. Found you. Do you want something? I shifted my gaze to the tall schoolgirl. Kako's familiar face was mere centimeters away from mine. She carried some water in her cupped palms. It seeped through her slender fingers, a few drops traveling down her white arms peeking out of the skimpy summer school uniform. Adjusting the position of my glasses, I considered Takako's face. Takako? Even bowing down, she seemed very tall. You just can't get enough of places like this, can you? First it was on the school building's emergency staircase, then behind the judo hall, and later at the library's veranda, where no one ever goes. How do you even find these places? Makes me wonder if you're some kind of different species compared to the rest of us. Maybe she is. Takako drew away from me, leaving a trail of drops behind her until she finally unloaded her palmful of water on a bush of white clovers. I think it can live perfectly fine without you watering it. Well, it's just that. Otherwise, it wouldn't feel like it's mine. Once she had finished watering the plant, she swept back her long twin tails in a single irritated motion. She only adopted that hairstyle near the beginning of this month and still appeared to have trouble making both twin tails the same length. Huh. You know that the Japanese name for the white clover comes from the fact it was used as cushioning material for, pack for packing glassware? Oh? Don't you think it would be a way cooler if your parcels were filled with white clovers instead of styrofoam? I guess so. Though you shouldn't write off bubble wrap like that, it's pretty great to play around wi with when you're bored. Yeah. You looked up its name? I imagine it might have some deeper meaning since it was a present from you. It doesn't. I see. By the way, the weather is great today, so what are you doing reading in a place like this? I'm here precisely because the weather is good. If it wasn't, I would be at the library instead. Keep sitting in a murky place like this all the time, you're gonna rot alive. Not how the real world works. I mean, like, mentally. I won't do that either. Speaking of which, your cousin Anne has psychic powers, right? Psychic powers? When I told her you, ke you keep reading books in places like this, who gave you permission to spread rumors about me? She said that they all give her shivers, as in she can't even get close to any of them, and this one spot behind the campus was like the worst of them all. I guess that's why I never felt lonely being here even by myself. Hey now, that's not how a per normal person should react to that. So anyway, I actually went out of my way to find a much better place for you than this, and it's just as quiet. Oh really? You can actually get some sunlight there and a pleasant breeze to boot. Does such a convenient place really exist? I'll show you. Hmm, the hallway. I stuck a bookmark in between the pages with a sigh, closed my book, and followed Takako. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be pronounced Patakago. We begin climb Begin mm. Began climbing the staircase of school building number 4, going all the way up to the 4th floor and beyond until we reached the door leading to the roof. A steel lock was keeping us shut though. Keep an eye out for anyone coming. Takago drew closer to the small window and began fiddling with the lock using a hairpin she produced from her pocket. Oh. After she was done with that, she grabbed the frame of the window and started shaking it, filling the corridor with clattering noise. Let out a final loud rattle before it, its lock sprung out of its place with a click. Takako opened the small window and, planned the, and planting her foot on the window still jumped through. She turned around and extended a hand, signaling me to follow her. Frowning, I exhaled a sigh, but that didn't faze her in the slightest. I sheepishly gave her my hand and, after taking a step on the windowsill, was pulled outside. A cool breeze swept across the roof. I could feel it caressing my hair as I closed my eyes, unable to stand the brightness. Ah, uh, the... oh.
You weren't lying about the weather. I opened my eyes to see Takako looking around the roof. Right, so what do you think? Hmm, well it's not bad, that much I can give you. But are you sure no one will come? Well, I did lock the door, so... I moved to the deeper end of the roof closer to the area behind the campus, sat down on one of the benches there and opened my book. Why is it, wait, why is this place locked? There's a bench here. And there's fences here. Why is it locked? With our school being located on the mountainside, I could oversee most of our poor town and even the sea in the distance. The blue sky extended from one edge of the sea to the next. Takago shifted her gaze from the athletics field to me. Oh! Remember the baseball field right in front of our club room? You ever heard the story about how the ground is soft between the home plate and the pitcher's mound? Can't say I have. Takago's facial expression told me she was about to start a really amusing story. I merely gave her a sideways glance and returned to my book without a moment's delay. We all tried digging up that ground yesterday. What do you think we found? I have no idea. Treasure! We didn't really expect to find anything at first, but when we actually dug the hole, we came upon these carns of boxed milk. What? Her eyes sparkled with excitement as she made a broad gesture trying to convey the mount they had found. Who buried all that crap there? No idea. Yes, someone who didn't like milk? That's a big waste of food! Who did it? Who, who done diddly do it? You just flush it down the toilet or something? Or, uh, you, you know, throw it away like a normal human being? Why go through all the trouble bearing it? I go place a finger on her lower lip. Maybe it was a trap or something. Why would you fill your trap with milk? Because everyone's lactose intolerant. Well, it's funny for starters. On to that and you'll be soaked in white goop. Oh. You said the ground had only become soft, right? That doesn't sound like someone could fall into it. I don't know. I wonder what they really wanted to achieve. Got any ideas, Sachi? The rituals express one's hatred of milk, perhaps? The shrew, the milk, harbinger of woe. Takago uttered the words with fake solemnity. 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 The cool breeze shuffled across the roof again. I could hear the clamor of students from the athletics ground. Ah, our class is using the basketball hoop. Don't you want to play with us there sometime? No. Why? It's not like you can't play. I don't like getting sweaty or dirty my clothes. Oh. What about the gym? I guess you could play hide and seek if you insisted. Yeah, right. Just an excuse for you to return to that gloomy old place behind the campus. I'm on to you. Takago sat down next to me on the bench with a sigh. What are you reading? He posed that question to me following a brief silence. I raised a hand that held my paper back so that the cover would be right in front of Takago's eyes. She considered it for a few moments. You always keep reading old stuff. I didn't react so she continued. You don't read any recent bestsellers. I prefer older books. It was probably because my mother's family home had a bunch of them lying around. Oh, that makes sense. As a child, I'd spend hours reading in my grandmother's room every time I went to visit. But one day, all those books vanished along with the whole shelf. They said they wanted to make the room feel more spacious. Now that they weren't easily accessible anymore, I felt an even stronger urge to read them. But since I didn't care much for anything other than the plot when I was little, I could remember neither the titles nor the authors. All I knew was that they were in reddish-brown cases that also served as appendices that they lined three rows of the bookshelf and that all of them were written by different authors. When I asked my grandparents, it turned out all those books belonged to my distant uncle and not even they knew much about them. I tried asking my mother as well, but that didn't yield any results either. She wasn't exactly thrilled with the idea of me reading those kinds of books in the first place. Really? Why, reading's good. Thanks to Takako's insistent questions, I ended up remembering that particularly frustrating episode in my life and was completely taken out of the world of the book I was reading. I get that, but I was just wondering exactly what you like about them. What kind of books do you like in general? The kind that make you want to keep reading even if something had gone into your eye. But really? If something got into my eye, I'd stop reading and, and get, you know, do my best to get that thing out of my eye. Holy moly, I would, oh. 
But Taco Girl probably wouldn't be satisfied with such a vague answer. What about you? Huh. Well, I'm going to end the episode here. We'll find out in the next episode. What about you? If you guys enjoyed this episode, then please slime that like button and subscribe down below for more awesome videos. Thank you everybody for watching this episode, and you will hear me in the next one. Bye!